the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light. Luke chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. Now come, let us ask God to help us understand. Dear Father in heaven, we know, O God, that only your Holy Spirit can reveal, um, can make light, or can make bright uh, what is uh, in the darkness. So our minds alone cannot understand. And we can walk away thinking that today was a waste of time. But Lord, help us so that we can worship you even through the sermon, that we can exalt you and lift your name up high, that our whole being, our mind, our hearts, our bodies, our spirit is in awe of you and worship you even through the word. So that Lord, we can see the light that has brought us out of darkness. Help us to see you, O oh God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, we have this part of no one after lighting the lamp. And then it says that uh, so that people who enter may see the light. Now, when it comes to seeing the light, what does the light mean? And there are in the Bible there are some passages uh, that can mean Jesus, or huh? the light of the world, Jesus Christ. It can mean truth, knowledge, and wisdom, or goodness, righteousness, holiness. It can mean life, not death. So Jesus came in. And also talk about us. So we talk about city on a hill, and then the salt of the earth, uh, light, uh, light in the darkness. And so we have the disciples and what disciples do. And also sometimes light is used to talk about the kingdom of light. So we are rescued from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Or we are the children of light and we walk into the light. So the Bible has a lot of things about light. And uh, so what does it actually mean? Well, I want to give you guys a tip so that when you read the Bible, you can understand better. A lot of times, um, you don't think about it this way. Okay? When you read the Bible and you see light, you don't think about it this way. A better way of thinking about it is like this. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is uh, the holiness. Jesus Christ is the light. Jesus Christ is the reason why we are disciples. And Jesus Christ is, uh, is the king of the kingdom. And it is... Uh, because of Him, we are children of the light. So everything focuses on Jesus Christ. But different passages would talk about different aspects of Jesus when it comes to the light. Okay, so again, if you are living in darkness and you're living in like a hopelessness, in a no way out sort of thing, today's teaching will be important so that you know where does your hope come from. Okay? So, now, one thing is that uh, this passage that we read uh, seems quite familiar. In case you didn't catch it, in Luke chapter 8, we actually read something similar. See or not? This one, uh, we have no one after lighting a lamp. And this one is Luke chapter 8. And you have no one after lighting a lamp. Covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed or puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. And we have covered this before. But we do a bit of revision. And for those who are new, this is something new for you. We cover this when we talk about the, the series on Take Care How You Hear. Where we have hearing, okay, so these are the various verses. Talk about hear, 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 hear. Take care then how you hear. That is in verse 18. And, and we talk about the parable of the sower. So the parable of the sower talks about, uh, you know, someone was uh, sowing the seed. And then in one place, uh, they, uh, Jesus interpreted, they may not believe and be saved because the devil takes away the word from their hearts. In another uh, soil, another ground, you have they receive the word with joy. Now receive the word, oh. So it's not like uh, being happy because they come to church. It's being happy because they hear the sermon. They receive the teaching and they receive it with joy. But these have no root and they believe for a while and in time of testing, they fall away. And then this one is saying that they hear, but they go on their ways and they're choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not mature. So you have the first three. And only the fourth one, it says here, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. So continue to come and then they bear fruit. So after talking about this, then only we have, um, okay, so it talks about the word, okay, the seed is the word of God. So after talking about this, then it comes to this part. And last time I say that, 
The light over here refers to the seed, the Word of God. And I say that, For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, made real, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. So, what does this mean? Okay, so this is a revision, like I say, so that you understand the previous passage. This is just saying that I have a secret. And I told you guys that I have a secret. I go to a gym. I am a serious gym goer. I've been going for one week. That's why you don't see anything on me. No muscle. Because one week, man, what can you see? Okay? And same also true. I go to a church. I'm a serious Christian. But the fellow, if he's only been going for one week, don't expect too much from the young Christian. He just knew God. He may have a lot of bad habits. He may have a very bad lifestyle. Maybe his language is all vulgar, swearing left and right. Maybe he hasn't really known what it means to live a holy life. So don't be too hard on him. Okay? Lead him, lead him a brother, a sister. True. So, but I also say this, okay? But let's say that I go to a gym. I'm a serious gym goer. But I've been going for 10 plus years. And then you look at me and you say that there's something wrong with that gym. <laughs> because Terrence, I mean, how can you be a serious gym goer and you look like that? <laughs> no muscles, no, no stamina. Because no muscles is one thing, but no stamina, no health, no fitness. So there must be something wrong. In the same way, if you say that I go to a church, I'm a serious Christian, and you've been going there for 10 plus years, but your mouth is still vulgar. Your behavior is still always gossiping about other people, envious, bad-tempered. At home, you are always rebelling against your parents. In school, you are the worst troublemaker. In church, maybe you look very nice. But then uh, actually, everything is wrong with you. So how is it possible that you say you're a serious Christian, you're a disciple of Jesus, and for 10 plus years, and this is uh, what we see. So there must be something wrong with the way you understand your faith, the way the Word is working in you. And this is what we say we have a secret. But that secret will be revealed, you see. You cannot be a secret Christian because whatever that is hidden will, will be shown out. There is nothing secret because the word, the word of God comes into our lives and it produces fruit with patience. We cannot hide the fact that we are a Christian. Okay, so that was the point of this uh, part last time. Then it says over here, take care then how you hear. This is the main part. Take care how you hear. So are you hearing carefully or not? Are you listening? Or oh, this is another sermon, waiting for the sermon to pass and then I go home and then it's just like another week and I come back again next week. It's not like that. You must hear carefully, hear the Word of God and then allow the Word of God to work in your heart, meditate upon it, pray to God, sing to God and then over time, maybe not immediately, okay? Sometimes uncles and aunties say, how come you're youth like that? How come you're youth like that? But then, don't, don't think about that. Think about it in terms of one year, five years, ten years, twenty years. Because all of you uh, can behave well for two years, you know, or five years. Every one of you can behave well under your father's mother roof. It is when you get out of the father's mother roof, you have your own life outside and so on, uh, you're free from whatever that your father mother put. Of course, like, I sometimes like to talk to, uh, to young people. Why you study during uh, primary school? Because you want to get a good career? Because you're thinking about uh, feeding, uh, supporting your family? Primary school, why you study? If you don't study, your parents whack you. <laughs> Very straightforward, okay? So the discipline that you have in the family, once you leave the family, it's no longer external. It must be internal, all right? So take care how you hear, all right? Take care how you hear so that you have the discipline, the identity that is in Christ, that is in you, so that when you come out into the world, right, you know who you are. Alright, so that is what we have. If you don't hear, this is the warning from this text. If you don't hear, what does it say? For to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. The assurance, the love, the joy, the peace, everything that you think you have, was you had before. But because you don't hold it, you see, that's the parable of the sower. What you have will be taken away. Don't be in that situation. Take care of how you're here, brothers and sisters. So when we come to the light, okay, when we come to the light, what does the light over here mean? This light means the word of God. Does it still fit in this new passage? This Luke 11. This is not the passage we read, it's Luke 8. In Luke 11, is the light still the seed, the word of God? Or does it mean something else? So we have a look. Okay, we, we read through. 
says here your eyes and lamp of your body so just uh, push up your eyes and lamp of your body when your eye is healthy your whole body is full of light but when it is bad your body is full of darkness therefore be careful lest the light in you be darkness now there's another passage matthew 6 verse 22 to 23 that helps us understand a bit because the first part again is the same the second part is slightly different but it shows us what does the first part mean now you can ask the question Terence, why is it the two texts is different the bible i thought is the exact words of jesus and so on well my answer to you is jesus did not teach one time only he teach many people in different places to get uh, in different times so you have uh, the people when they were born they were born on different monday he teach like this the same story then tuesday uh, next week next month next day he teach again the same thing uh, to different group of people so that many people recall it so it's not contradicting okay? so that's one way to understand so but this is how we understand the sense if your eye is good the light light image so powerful is simply because of this even in your home right now you have grown up in your home in the middle of the night there is no light right power blackout you hear a sound downstairs you are also scared it is your own house i tell you this even more funny in your own room in your own bedroom if in total darkness you hear something right you are scared but as soon as the light is switched on, you're not. That is why there is a very powerful image that is being set over here. In the darkness, you are scared. You are full of fear, full of doubt. But in the light, you're not. So how do we explain this? Okay, how to understand? I'm going to be uh, reading from uh, 2 Corinthians. So 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12 to 18. And this is a very, very helpful passage. But then we don't have that much time to go through it in detail. Uh, but, but not for lack of uh, one thing, uh, huh? I really want to go through it. But then uh, this is a very helpful passage. So since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end, but their minds were hardened. Just ignore that because I, I want to explain by one more time. So just ignore that for a moment. Okay, but the part that I want to explain is talking about this veil. Veil is what? Veil is a covering. A covering that makes it so that we cannot see. Okay? So it says that for to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted. It's not taken away. Because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. What's the meaning behind here? Saying that they have the Bible, they have the Old Testament, but they still cannot see. They cannot see. Why? Because there's a veil over them. They cannot see what is the meaning of the, of the Old Passage, of the Old Testament. And this is still happening today. It's happening to the Jews. It's happening to Christians. Christians today still read the Bible and they cannot see. Alright? So we want to help you. Some of you guys think it's boring. Some of you guys think there's no meaning. Things not relevant and so on. But pray for the Holy Spirit that you can see. Okay, next one is... But when one turns to the Lord, the veil, the veil is covering you, is removed. And now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there 
is freedom. This is a fantastic place for us to rejoice. Can we read again? The veil is removed. Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from doubt, freedom from, from uh, persecution in the sense that you fear other people, approval. So there is freedom, true freedom. And we all with unveiled. This is good. With unveiled face, what is it like? Beholding the glory of the Lord. You see Jesus. Are being transformed. You are being changed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. So you slowly growing holy. Day by day, week by week, year by year. So in 10 years' time, if you are truly a Christian, there will be such a difference between who you are now and who you were 10 years ago. There should be. So if you say that there's no difference from after one year, two years, I completely understand. Because sometimes trees, fruits grow very slow. Okay? Some trees I really take 100, 200 years to grow. I hope it doesn't take that long for you to grow. All right? But then we want to see you change from one degree of glory to another. And how is this happening? Not through your strength, not through your persistence, your, your heart, and so on. The, the sort of philosophy that we come from Facebook, you can do it. Put more effort. No, it says what? For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The Spirit that works in you. The Spirit is the one that makes it possible. Not through your power or might or intelligence or charisma or through your perseverance, whatever it is. It is through the Spirit that is in you. Okay? So this is a wonderful text. But we haven't go to what I want to say. This one, the only thing we see is the veil. Okay? So you can see at the veil, if your eye is healthy, what I'm doing is I'm connecting these two passages. I'm saying right now is that if your eye is good, you can receive the light. If your eye is bad, how is your eye bad? When it is veiled, then your body is full of darkness because you cannot receive light. The light of the glory of Christ, which we see in chapter 4. Okay? So this one, in chapter 4, alright? And so anybody that really wants to study this, I really encourage you to study this. It continues, okay? Paul continues in his letter. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we will commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Why is Paul saying this here? Because there are people who are, who are teaching and they are, and they are distorting the word of God to get more um, uh, self, get more fame, get more award, get more something. So there are false teachers around, okay? False apostles. So that's why he says that there are people like this. We refuse, we renounce, okay? Now, we do a bit of side tour, two minutes, okay? Side tour. Because uh, it's not often we read this type of passage. We refuse to practice cunning or to temper. Temper. Temper means what? Change. Distort. God's word. And uh, I want to do a public service announcement, meaning that uh, don't read this Bible. Okay? Because I don't normally have a passage that says uh, temper God's word. Just happened that I'm studying for this passage. Just so happened that God gave me this passage. So when you talk about tempering God's word, there are many translations around. The one that I always use in my teaching is the ESV, English Standard Version. So if you want to ask why there's so many different versions, um, because everybody wants to bring the word of God to different peoples. All right? So they, go, they have different translations. Some is easier to understand, some not so easy to understand. Okay? That's an easy way to explain. So there are translations for Malay, English, Mandarin, Cantonese, or all the different languages in the world. There are translators translating the Bible into those languages. And all of them uh, can be read. There has not been a, a translation that I have been against, um, and this is the only one. The Passion Translation is a very, very bad translation. Okay? So I'm just telling everybody, if you ever see a Bible uh, that has the Passion Translation, uh, don't go near it. Um, unless you're just like me, because huh? if you're studying it, you can read the Quran, you can read the Buddhist text, you can read anything. But then if you're using this for for your own, um, how do you say, for your own faith, 
to build up your own faith? Don't. Okay? One reason is because the thinking comes into the text and he is not qualified. So if you read a bit more, he's not a linguist, he's not a scholar. He, uh, the people, he said he translated the Bible in a, in a different language, but then the people who he worked with say he did not. So there's a lot of problems over there as well. Another reason is because, according to Brian, uh, Jesus met him in a room, breathed on him, and gave him the assignment. The Bible is named Passion because that's the name of the angel he saw. So you have this background on the, on the translation, which is okay, except he doesn't tell you. These things are not stated in the cover, in the FAQ, or anywhere else on the website. He only shared this in an interview. Why? Because sharing these type of things, right, will make some people uh, a bit more careful. Because you're saying that your translation is coming in by a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus who breathed on you and gave you this uh, assignment. So it sounds very uh, need to study more sort of thing. So he doesn't say this. What he does in his website, he states scholars. He quotes people that uh, I love, Gordon Fee, he quotes uh, different, different scholars, but he doesn't say about this one. So why is that? So that's a big question. I don't know to talk too much. Uh, today's sermon is not about this uh, translation. But the translation, the book itself, uh, has added words, has changed the meaning, and is pushing an interpretation of theology that is not what the Bible says. For example, we read this one just now. Therefore, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. That's what we read. This is a Passion Translation. Open your heart and consider my words. Watch out that you do not mistake your opinions for revelation light. You compare the two, right? This one has a lot of interpretation. And uh, what he says, darkness, he says is opinion. I very betahan. I go and look through the Bible gateway. I check 59 translations of this one. So I just go through one by one. Uh -huh. All of them translate as uh, skotos, the Greek word, as darkness. It's a very straightforward word to use. It is nothing complex. You know, some words are very complex. You don't know how to translate it. 59 translations all translate it as darkness. He is the only guy who translated his opinion because he is giving his opinion. He's given interpretation. And you can say, but can or can we, maybe we can understand it as that. No, you cannot because there is a difference between a commentary and the Bible. A commentary is one guy's opinion on what the Bible says. A sermon is an interpretation. I'm telling you what I think the Bible says. But at the end of the day, you trust which one? You trust the man or you trust the Bible? You trust the Bible. But if your Bible is corrupted... Where else are you going to go? If your Bible already has the word of man inside, so there are some translations which is correct, but there are some parts which is not. So if some part is yes, some part is no, how are you going to live? Because every preacher of a Christian faith is going to tell you the Bible is the word of God. And you live and die by the word of God. And you hold this translation, right? And to live by the word of Brian Simmons? Cannot. So even though it is easier to understand, that is not what the Bible says. So the translation, the book itself has added words, changed meaning, pushing interpretations. I don't want to talk too much about this one. So the question is, when you talk about tampering in God's Word, the question you have is, is this actually what the Bible says? Or is this what He says? And that's the challenge I always ask people when it comes to preachers, commentaries, whatever it is. Try to find out because everybody is trying to interpret. But very few people attempt to change the Bible to say what they want. All right? So be very careful about this. Okay, public service announcement finish. Uh, we carry on. What I want to say, which is still related, is that the Bible itself uh, is the one that gives us light. And if our gospel is veiled, okay, this is, uh, he continued, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. So if you cannot understand, if you cannot see, it is a spiritual problem. That is why we start the service with a prayer. Holy Spirit, come and help us so that we can see, so that we are not blind. Because our minds are open to the world of sin and all this stuff. So we cannot understand. So we ask God to give us light. And this is the bad eye, blinded that cannot see. So the minds of the unbelievers, keep them from seeing the light. So this is talking about good, good eye, not blinded, can see. So you can see the light of the gospel. Then you say, wow, this is so good. Wow, God is so good. Jesus is my Lord. And what do they say? What do you see? What are you seeing? You're seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 
So this is something that we want to see. This is what we want to see, the gospel, the glory of Christ. And it continues on. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said that light shine out of darkness. Okay? What is the light? This is light, huh? This is the light. That light shine out of darkness as it shown in our hearts to give what? The light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful part. What do we want to see? What does God shine in the darkness? God gives the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We want to see Jesus. That's what we want to see. We want to see Jesus in our lives. We want to see Jesus in the lives of other people. That is what we want to see. Okay? So this is the light. So if you can understand that, this one becomes clear. So your eye, if it's good, you can see the light of Jesus. If your eye is bad, you are blind. And how horrible it is if you cannot see Jesus. That is more tragic than going bankrupt. That is more tragic than losing your health. That is the most tragic part of life. That you cannot see Jesus. That is pity beyond pity. Miserable wretch if you cannot see Jesus. So, are you veiled or unveiled? Are you blind or not blind? Are you able to see the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ? Does this excite you? This thing, light shine out of darkness, the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. These things is what we celebrate. And it says here, Therefore be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. The word over here is be careful. Be careful means what? Take care. Take care is over here in uh, Luke chapter 8. What does it say? Take care then how you hear. Take care how you hear. In Luke chapter 11, what we're reading now, he's saying what? Take care how you see. So it's related, yeah? you can see that. Chapter 8, take care how you hear. Take care how you see, how you see, because good eye will see the light, bad eye will not see the light, will be remain in darkness. Take care. Okay? And right now you can also pray to God, even if you're sitting there. Take care how you see. Because life, I tell you, brothers and sisters, life is a series of choices. And then you have choices always in what you see. And it's not clear sometimes. You go on Facebook, YouTube, news, entertainment, wherever there is you watch. What, which link do you click? Which article do you read? Which YouTube do you watch? It's all choices you see. And I ask you this question. If someone is... Uh, okay, I'll go to that question later on. But just think that every, every decision you make is a choice. And it's not just media. All this is just media. TV, websites, all. That's also how you see yourself. When you talk about see, uh, it's not just your eyeball, you know. It's talking about your spiritual understanding. How do you see yourself, your family, your friends, study, work, church, life, God, and all things? Is it, when you see all these things, uh, is it part of the story of redemption, of salvation, of blessing, of God's work in you right now? the story of God, the story of the Bible in all the things that you do? Or is it only that God works at Saturday 4 to 6 and God only works on Sunday at uh, what time? Uh, 9.45 to 12? And the rest of the time, God doesn't work. It's not like that. God works every hour. And we need Him every hour. We need Him every moment. God is at work even right now. And when you go home, and your parents got problems, your school got problems, God is still at work. Do you see? The question is, do you see? And then, okay, that, this is the question, okay? So some guy comes up, and you can ponder this one, and says, I want to see things in a positive way. Yeah? And, but bad thoughts keep coming into my head. 
how can I see things positively? I think everyone can understand what this guy is saying, right? Well, you say how you see, you want to see the light, you, want, you don't want to see darkness. And then someone responds, yeah, I also want. Terence, this is what I want. Can you please help me? I want to see things. I want to see the glory of God. How do you answer? Consider, brothers and sisters, you say you want to have life. You want to see life. What do you watch? What do you listen? What do you talk about? What do you think about? If you're saying that you want to have life, but you read a lot of those stupid uh, websites that talk, I don't know, just making things up, uh, songs that talk about better to just uh, kill yourself and jump over the whatever. And then you say at the same time you want life. But your choices of music, your choices of movies, your choices of uh, whatever, then I say, okay, well then you try devotions, reading. I don't want, but can you tell me how to have life? Um, then I say, okay, how about listening to these songs? No, but I prefer other songs. I ask you to listen to this sermon, but I don't like to listen to this sermon. I should watch movie, Christian movies. Or I don't want to watch, but I want to have peace. Huh? Okay, I got this article, I got this testimony. Just listen to this testimony, three minutes only. No, but you're willing to watch anime for hours, oh? <laughs> ah, everybody looking at each other already. Ask you to watch a three-minute testimony. Very chalat one, very hard. Ask you anyone to watch anime, they can just be stuck there all the time. Right? I'm not saying that anime is bad. I also watch lah. Huh? So you guys, if you don't know me, I also watch. The thing right now is saying, what do you choose? What do you watch? What do you listen? What do you talk about? What do you think about? But there is a deeper truth in that question. There is a deeper question coming out over here, you know. The question over here, like I said, it's not just about this. This is shallow. There's a deeper sense of what we're talking about seeing. The person has still not gotten it yet. The person is still thinking very shallow. I want my life to be better. I want my life to be good. I want it so that I go past uh, every day and I don't have to think bad thoughts about uh, you know, uh, my family situation, my school situation, my boyfriend-girlfriend situation, my, my economic situation. I just don't want to think about those things. So he's saying, asking for help about those things. Just remove the pain. Just remove the misery. But that is not what the Christian is doing. What is the Christian answer? He is asking for help to think positive thoughts. Is the Christian faith about thinking positive? Is that all the Christian faith is about? Changing the mind so that we think positive and don't think negative. That we never cry. That we don't sorrow. That we don't break down in tears. Is that the Christian faith? No. The Christian faith allows us to have sorrow, godly sorrow. Sorrow that is real. Sorrow that brings us nearer to God. And we have joy, but it's godly joy. It is a joy that surpasses all understanding. We have sorrow, we have joy. It is not positive thinking. This is not um, that sort of teaching. The Bible is not saying think positive. The Bible is saying See the light. The glory of Jesus. Alright? The knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. How wonderful that is. And every week, you hear it from the church and offering to all who will come. All who are weary, all who are tired, come and I will give you rest. So it's an invitation to all to see the light. Not a momentary forgetting of your troubles, but it's a redemption of your troubles. That is the wonderful news of Jesus Christ. So when we say see the light, okay, and then the person then says again, later on, that, okay, we, we go to this one first. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, will it be wholly bright? Uh, it will be wholly bright as when a lamb with its rays gives you light. Now, you read this, like me, huh? you read, oh, I don't know what it means. Huh? Body light, then no part dark, then holy bright. And like. Actually, this one is very easy. So when I explain it, hopefully you remember, so that next time you come to this passage, it's very easy to understand. It is actually similar to the earlier passage. What's the earlier passage saying? Uh, the, uh, Luke 8. There is no secret gym goer. We understand that one. There is no secret Christian. We understand that part. It's saying the same thing because it says that if there is light, you will see light. Okay, if the lamp, lah, huh? the light bulb, if you say it has light, 
it will light up. You will see it all over the place. It's not going to be just in the lamp. It's going to scatter light all over the room. Okay? It, the light will not be held just there only for itself. It will shine. That's the whole point of a light, of a lamp. So that when you see, is it lighted? It's not. If your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright. As when the lamp with its rays gives you light. Jesus' time don't have light bulb, but got lamp. All right? So it's still, still understood because it's very, it's very clear already. If you see the light of Jesus, if you receive it and your body is full of light, can you keep it a secret? You might be able to keep it a secret for a while, maybe because you're a young Christian. But after 10, 20 years, huh, your life, your marriage is different. The way you work is different. The way you talk is different. Everything is different. There is no such thing as a secret Christian. The light that is in you will come out. The Holy Spirit will, will force the fruit to come out. All right? So that is the joy that we have as well. To know that whatever vulgar language that you have, whatever pornography that you guys are on, whatever addiction that you guys are on, you continue to fight it, you struggle and so on, but you rely on Jesus, you rely on the Holy Spirit, trusting that He will bring out the fruit in the, in the future. For some people, some Christians, they get very defeated because they see there's no change in me after so long and so on. But you trust. The whole word is have faith. Have faith in Christ. And trusting that this promise, this promise is true. That if your body is full of light, you will shine. All right? You'll be wholly bright. So it's very easy to understand. So come to the whole passage already, you understand. But, but there is this. The person now says, help. I hear what you're saying. My mind understands, but I cannot see how Jesus can help me. You talk a lot, but you talk like riddles. I still don't understand. All right? And for the unbeliever, it is that situation. For the Christian in the room, a lot of what I say, they're just nodding, they understand, it makes sense. Because you've gone through that stage already. If you have not, then maybe, maybe you, again, we, we need to, um, to pray to, to, to God to help you understand. But for the unbeliever, uh, huh? for the person who doesn't believe in God, a lot of what I say, they, they just cannot understand. And if you're saying these things, uh, how can you help? How can you help? And the answer is in 2 Corinthians 3. Do you see how to remove the veil? What is the way to remove the veil? The veil remains unlifted because... Only through Christ it is taken away. Only Christ can take away the veil. And then it says on again, but continues on. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. So you cannot think that if I just go to seminary and I study the Bible and I graduate with a master's in divinity or a, or a, 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 um, a PhD or become a pastor, or become a preacher, or become a worship leader, or a cell group leader, and all this type of thing, then I will understand. It's not like that. It's not by your effort and your, and your thing. You must turn your life, uh, your whole life, uh, towards Christ. And then when you turn your whole life towards Christ, then your eyes uh, will be clear. And that turning to Christ, uh, it's who does it, God does it, or we do it, it's both. Okay. So we do our part, God does His part, and then we can see. So, but the key here is that you must turn to the Lord, not yourself. And not to the pastor or so. The pastor can guide you. The Christian leaders, the Christian brothers, sisters, they can help you through. But your eyes uh, need to turn to the Lord. Okay? Okay, so we still don't understand, so let's carry on. One, one part, okay, that we have not seen yet, and I, I think this is very exciting, is that we are on this passage over here. Okay? This is the light part. Eugene last week talked about the signs and wonders. Okay? Talking about, if you remember, Jesus is the sign. That the cross, the resurrection is the sign of Jonah. Oh, remember or not? Oh, you remember now? Huh? 
So, we see how everything fits. In this 1516, some of them said he cast out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, while others to test him kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. So they don't understand, they don't see, but they want to see something so that they can understand. So they're asking for a sign so that they can believe. So they ask for a sign. And then Jesus, famously, he said, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he's saying that the sign of Jonah, three days uh, in the fish, in the belly of the whale, then only it comes out. So talking about the resurrection. And then we talk about over here, he continues on and says, see the light. And says that when your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. Be careful. Okay, take care how you see. What is he talking about? Take care how you see. Is to take care how you see the sign. In Acts 26, verse 22 to 23, Paul says this, To this day I have, not, I have had the help that comes from God. And so I stand here testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass. This is Paul speaking in, in, uh, to the king. That Christ must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, the sign, the resurrection of Christ, by, the word here is by, by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light, both to our people and to the Gentiles. The sign of Jonah is the sign that the people are seeking but not understanding. And Jesus is saying, this sign, when you see it, it gives you light. And it will fill your whole body with light. This is amazing. In two different passages, he uses the light in two different ways. The Word of God cannot be hidden. It will bear fruit with patience. The parable of the sower. Over here is talking about sign from heaven, the sign of Jonah. You see the light. You, if you see, because you have good eyes, you receive, your whole body will be full of light. Take care how you see. And that is why the church has the cross. The church talks about the resurrection, talks about the crucifixion of Christ, so that you will see Christ in His full glory. This is the sign of Jonah. So this, I say, this light Jesus is talking about, it's part of all this, alright? So Jesus Christ encompasses all these things. But this light over here, I suggest, I say, is referring to the sign in the context. The resurrection of Christ. Can you see? So are you veiled or unveiled? Are you blind or not blind? Can you see in the cross these things? Because that's what this is, the glory, the gospel. The gospel is Christ dying on the cross for our sins and three days later rising up and have life and being the first of us all so that we also will have life and let light shine out of the darkness and in Him, your darkness will be gone. And some of you still will say, all right, I still don't understand. You speak in riddles. What are you saying? I still don't understand. I still don't see. And this is the part where I urge everyone as you talk to your friends and family members, if you really want to see, you will continue to come. You will come to every service and you will hear about the cross. You will hear about Jesus you will hear the testimonies. You will hear and you will start to see. But only if you're making that choice. Because one of the greatest choices we have is on Saturdays, on Sundays, I have other things to do. I have other things to see. But if you really want to see Jesus, you must. there's only one place that talks about Jesus and that is the church that declares and proclaims who Jesus is. And the hope is that you go from here not here. <laughs> you go from here. Uh, steady, production team. <laughs> you go from here. Okay, try again. I don't understand. Because I tell you, okay, all of us went through this. I, I say this as a consolation to everyone. I also went through this. Okay? And everybody who is a Christian of any worth will tell you that we never understood what the sermon was about when we first came to church. 
Now today, so many of us stand because we can now say that God is the highest, glory to God in the highest, and saying that Jesus is Lord. Because, why? Because we can see. And we give thanks to who? Ourselves? No. <laughs> it's not because Pastor Lim is a fantastic pastor. He is a very good pastor. But it's not because of him. It's not because of you. It's not because of me. Because of what God has done, I can see. So with that, can we just uh, close in prayer? So I'll give you guys quiet time. Some of you guys, you may not still be able to see. Even as a Christian, you might find that your life is very tough. There's so many problems and so many things. And you're trying to see where God's redemptive work is in your life. How is God working? Because you find that you're walking alone, you cannot see God. So pray. Come to God in prayer. So let us just uh, quiet down. I'll just uh, not talk for, for a few minutes. And later on, the worship team will come up. And then we will close in prayer. Okay? So just quiet down and pray to God. That you may see. Let us rise as we worship.